Uh, so when a pen comes with a warranty, whether it's a one year or a lifetime or whatever, is it ever worth violating that warranty to take the pen apart to do some extra cleaning or whatever? Twisby encourages tinkering, and with a Jinhao or similar brands, that's not a concern, because lower price. I've seen various videos on how to take apart the upper priced pens, and they all come with a warning about warranties being voided if you try this at home. What's your opinion on this? Okay, this is a good question, because, you know, as a tinkerer and as a retailer who officially represents manufacturers, um, I have to straddle a line sometimes. So I will say like when I am taking apart pens and stuff like that, I will almost always, if I can remember to say, <laughs> that be conscious that whatever you're doing at this point now could be considered a violation of your warranty. So just be aware of that. So when I say that, and I'm sh I know there's other people like Stephen Brown does a lot of disassembly videos and stuff. He has disclaimers and whatnot. Essentially, it's like a CYA kind of situation. We just want we just don't want to be like you to do something and then get really pissed off and get and come after us and say like you know hey, you took apart your pen and I took mine apart and now it's broken and I'm mad at you. Well, okay, you know it's like when you're taking a pen apart, realize that you are assuming responsibility for that. Just like if you buy a car and you go to replace your own alternator, whatever you do replacing your alternator, you're responsible for, you know? So it's like if the, from the manufacturer's perspective, anything you're doing beyond the normal use of the pen, which for most pen companies is writing, filling with ink and cleaning, anything beyond that, most pen companies would say, you shouldn't be doing it because we can't control what you're doing and if you break something we can't be held responsible and all this kind of stuff because in general a lot of people don't know how to take apart their pens and people do mess things up and you know it's really tough as a manufacturer to then you know come back with that and pens made these days generally don't disassemble as easily as they used to in like the more the vintage era of fountain pens um, that and just in general, I've had a lot of conversations with this, uh, with Nathan Tardiff of Noodlers. He's been, you know, he, he makes his pens very much to be tinkered with, even like heat setting ebonite feeds and stuff like that. Still, a lot of people just have a hard time with that. I think just in general, we are in a much more disposable society, so people aren't as familiar with how to fix things and how to tinker with things as they used to be a generation or two ago. So manufacturers have manufactured their pens to be a little less you know, tinkerer friendly than they used to be. So that kind of exacerbates the issue a little bit, but I think it's been almost in a defense of, you know, they've manufactured pens so that you really don't have to mess with them very much because most people don't know how to mess with them. Does that make sense? So when you do get into this, this world of starting to disassemble your pens, which, which means, you know, anything beyond just normally filling and cleaning the pen, you know, and usually, um, not at like a Jinhao or something really inexpensive, but some of the you know pricier pens will have, which I would consider things like in the you know forty fifty dollar range and up. They'll often have like instructions with how to clean and fill your pen and stuff like that. So they'll have like normal use and care instructions in there. It's when you get beyond that that you're really taking your your pen life into your own hands. So whenever you're pulling out nibs and feeds, whenever you're you know a piston mechanism and you're trying to disassemble it and that kind of thing, it's actually somewhat rare for a company like Noodlers or Twisby, for example, to not only allow you to do that, but then like give you a wrench to be able to take your pen apart. And I can't even tell you how many people have trouble getting their Twisby back together. I've shot several videos on that, and that is an issue sometimes. And some people you know, screw it up and they damage their stuff and they don't know what they're doing and, and it's okay, you know, it's like I don't get upset when people do that but you just have to realize that when you're taking something apart, you are assuming responsibility for whatever happens. And so it's as far as like a warranty type situation goes regarding disassembly and reassembly, I don't think it's so much that if you take apart your pen at all and put it back together and it's perfectly fine, that that's considered a warranty violation. Because essentially, the pen should function well if you do it right, so there's no need for a warranty you know, claim. Uh, it's only if there's some kind of a defect or something like that. So if the writing in the pen is not functioning properly, that's really a warranty situation. But if you take apart a pen and you put it back together and you strip the threads or you lose a piece or you crack something because of what you have done to disassemble and reassemble it, that's when you voided the warranty. And they're gonna say, well, you took it apart and we didn't tell you to do that, so that's really on you. 
and then you're pretty much gonna have to pay for a repair if they even have repairs, depending on who the company is. So that's that's where the disclaimer comes from. Now, some other things you might see is like nib tuning and adjustment and smoothing and stuff like that. That always violates warranty, always, um, because then you are altering the product. And as soon as you did that, pen companies are like, you've changed it, we're not gonna, you know, as soon as you smooth that nib, they're not gonna take it back for any nib issues in the future because you've altered it. Now, the one thing that I can say is that I've talked to a couple of different companies and you know, it's not like it's not like if you break the seal on any one aspect of the pen, like the whole thing is void of warranty. It's only gonna be like if you smooth your nib and then your piston goes funky and it doesn't work anymore. You can still send it back and say like, hey, I've got a piston issue. If your issue's not at all with the nib, the one part that you've altered, they shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, you know, depending on how picky they are and I can't really say like definitively that that's always going to be because it's always going to depend on kind of who's who's reviewing the pen um, but uh, you know it's like you know I'm just using a Twisby for an example because I have a later question that I'm going to use a Twisby but you know if you smooth out your Twisby nib and it writes great but all of a sudden your piston just goes it cracks or does something crazy that it shouldn't be doing um, then you know Twisby would would fix that thing and they would really, wouldn't have a problem with the fact that you altered the nib or whatever and another point is when you're when you're getting a nib smooth or ground or done whatever through a nib meister you're violating the warranty from the original manufacturer on that nib as well I don't know if you're aware that that happens but that is definitely the case because it is being permanently altered so in that case any nib issues you would then go back to the nib meister and have to work it out with them but you couldn't have a nib custom ground from a nib meister from pelican or whoever and then say go back to pelican and say my nib's not writing well and they'd be like well this isn't the nib that we put on it anymore you know because it's been altered so you need to go back to whoever you took it to so that's a whole different kind of situation so um, that's kind of where I stand with that. So really just to summarize everything here, ultimately it's your call whether you want to you know, void any type of warranty by taking apart a pen further than it's instructed in the manufacturer's directions. Um, and the, the kind of last thing that I'll say regarding all of that is usually even if there's a warranty thing and they'll cover it all, there's almost always a shipping charge that you'll have to cover. So it's really gonna depend on the value of the pen and whether it's worth it to you. And there's almost always a lead time as well. So there's gonna be some kind of threshold that you personally will feel is worth it or not to do a warranty claim uh, on a pen that you might have an issue. It may just be an aesthetic thing, you know, a little scratch or a little whatever that is not as big a deal to you maybe or or some kind of something like that so it's, it's always going to be a judgment call you know you may be dealing with 10 to 20 dollars of shipping costs so if you have a 500 dollars pen yeah okay in the grand scheme of things it's not that bad if it's a 30 dollars pen it's probably not going to be worth it to you so the best thing to do is look the pen over you know and make sure that whatever retailer that you're buying it from that you know what their policies are for us we have a 90-day policy that's pretty much like, you know, use the pen whatever and it's 90 days. If you're actually inking it up and writing with it, we do charge a restocking fee because we have to clean it out and assess it. And there's there's true costs incurred with us having to kind of re-inspect re that pen once we get it back. But if you get a pen and you're like, this piston is just not functioning properly and you send it back to us, it's no problem. You know, we'll even cover shipping and all that kind of stuff. If it's a defect like that, if it's a matter of preference, that's another situation. That's when you need to know kind of where your retailer stands and then every retailer's got a different thing. So it is a little bit complicated. You gotta know where the retailer stands and kind of where they draw the line. You gotta know where the manufacturer stands and where they draw the line. You gotta look at shipping costs and all those kind of things. So it can be a bit of a hassle sometimes depending on what the situation is. And where it really gets sticky is when you have pens in like that 30 to $70 range where it's like, I know there's gonna be like a shipping charge if I have any warranty issues. Is it really worth you know that so that's where it can help to like read reviews and see kind of what the popular opinion is on any given pen to see kind of what the risk is um, but you know life is just a series of calculated risks you know you take a risk getting out of bed in the morning and taking a shower you know so it's like you can't ever completely eliminate risk but it's all a matter of calculated risks so reading reviews and stuff like that can help to to um, you know, curb some of that. So hopefully that helps you out, Kevin. Hopefully that answers questions for a bunch of you. Um, and I'm happy to follow up with more of that if you have questions in the comments as well.